Welcome to this first in a series of instructional videos on operating IR Windows. We're going to get started right from the icon, and this will be the only time I actually start from the icon. I want to give you a chance to see the splash screen and the status bar as it's loading. In the future, we'll just go right to the pieces that we're going to be detailing. This is an overall view uh, of IR Windows. It's meant to be very short. We will have future videos giving more detail on different aspects of its operation. Right off the bat, there are three views into IR Windows. There's a lot of things you can configure and a lot of ways IR Windows is used. These three views define sort of your skill level and what we expect in terms of capabilities when operating IR Windows. The simplest is the operator view, so let's pop into that. The operator would be a technician in a production floor or uh, somebody working in a repair depot that has a variety of units coming in. They're going to be running a predefined series of tests, something we call a sequence, on devices, one or more, and they have minimal allowance, or minimal permission to come in and make changes. So this is a very simple setup. Uh, the operator's name, and if it doesn't change, it can stay the same all the time. You saw it start up with my name. The device we're going to be testing, if there are multiple devices, you can select from that. But if it's a production environment, maybe the same device over and over again. Serial number of the specific box that we're testing. I'm going to give this a unique serial number. I'm just manually entering it, but you could have a barcode reader or different ways to enter this serial number into the system. And then the sequence, uh, the test sequence we're going to be run. If we have different devices or different goals, we may have different test sequences. If it's a production environment, it may be a single sequence, but we're just going to run this in this case. There's also a place for notes if your particular lab wants to record things like environmental conditions or whatever uh, is important to you to record around a sequence. So we'll get it started, and the first thing that happens is it does a quick check on the sequence to see if there are any problems. There are no errors, so we'll start its operation. While running a sequence, instructions can be given to the operator. Uh, they don't have to be, but depending on what's being run, you may want to give more or less instructions. This particular sequence is a pared down version of something used in a repair depot where multiple devices can be coming in and being run on a general purpose test platform. So the first instructional piece is how to set up the test jigs to support the device that's going to be tested. In this case, it'll be a site, and so we have the support for the site as it looks into this test equipment that we call the common EO. That was a static image. Now we are seeing a piece of video showing some additional configuration, uh, some equipment that needs to be attached to the general purpose device. And then now that we see the UUT, the device that's being tested mounted, we can move on to show the last bit. Since this UUT doesn't have an output video that we can capture, we need a separate calibrated camera to look into it. We refer to it as the eyepiece because it's looking into the eyepiece. And this is how we're going to be capturing information or imagery from the in this case, site. Now that the setup is complete, we actually start running the test. Uh, in this case, the first one is a boresight test where we're looking at the alignment. We get the results and a quick pass-fail report to the operator so they know whether to go on or not. And then the next test is an MTF, a focus test. In this case, we're actually controlling temperature of a black body, the target that's presented, collecting an image from the device and analyzing that image. Again, we show the result and the fact that it passes. We're just, in this sequence, going to perform those two tests because now we get instructions on how to put away the equipment uh, and also how to put away the device that's being tested. And once everything's put away, a summary report is being generated. In this case, it's coming, uh, coming up here so that we can see results. We can also show a graph and a table of information. This is from a template, so a developer can, can change the report and how it looks. They have that option. And also, this report is a PDF file, so it can either be sent to the screen or sent off to a printer. That completes that run, and now we can do another run if we need to. So that's the operator's view. <coughs> We're going to switch now to the developer's view. The developer is the person who set up the sequence for the operator, and so the view is more complex, but you can see in the middle there's the operator's view, and around it are the tools the developer needs to create the components that's used in that view. Right off the bat, what you see is a test library, and, and by the way, this is all sizable. We can change the size of this pane, or if I've got more real estate, I may want to separate out um, this particular panel over to the side. In fact, in my setup at my desk, I have a much bigger set of screens, so I can have this all spread out. But for this limited real estate, it makes sense to have things overlapping so I can get to them. So this test library has organized the 
tests by either spectral group or by functional component. Within that grouping, we see the tests themselves, the individual tests that can be run. Some are defined by standards or for a common operation. We can see here the MTF test that was run earlier. But this is a general abstraction. And under that sort of general definition of the test, we have the specifics as test configurations. A test configuration holds the details of how we're going to run that test. Like in this case, we're going to average four different frames. We're running at this particular set point, meaning the black body will be controlled to that temperature. There is the center of the image, uh, the region of interest that we're going to be collecting our data from, the target that will be run. All the details of running the test are stored in separate configurations. That way, I can run different configurations depending on what I want to try to accomplish. The configuration can be based on the device that's being tested, or if I have different goals. For instance, I can have this MTF that averages four images. This one is a single image, so I can quickly run one test to the other and see what the results look like. These tests can be individually run. We have the status while the test is being run. And when it's complete, it stores all of the information about that test in the test history, which is a database of results. So what you see here are the two tests that were run earlier on this particular device, serial number 1004, what we just ran. And here's the Boresight result and the MTF result. And I can come in and take a look at those results um, in more detail. There's a graph of that result. And now that I have the results stored in the database, I can actually modify the way that I'm viewing it. So here's the, the view as the test was run. But I can also come in and say, well, you know, I want to change the region of interest from this to this. And you'll see in the background how the results change. Now, I can fiddle with this and some of the, the parameters for analyzing the results. I can change all those while looking at it. But what it doesn't do is it does not go back and change what's in the test history. That's as the test was run, so that I can always go back and see the results when the test was run itself. And that includes the configuration under which the test was run. So if I later come in and change this configuration, when I come back and look at this test, I'll always see the configuration under which it was run. So that's the test, uh, individual test and test configurations. Other things I set up are the information about the device that's being run. So here's the demonstration FLIR and some of the information about the camera. Also the sequence library. Here's that demo sequence as the one that we ran earlier, and here are the details of the steps involved with that sequence, things like the instructions that were given. Here are some of the instructions, and also the configurations of the tests that were run. I can change these configurations in the same way I did for the other test. I can edit this uh, configuration and come in and add additional steps. Here are the steps. I've got the test library, so I can grab um, some other uh, result. Let's say I want to grab a 3D noise test, grab it, and pass it over in. I have a way of configuring that, changing that. I can make alterations. This is all in the developer's view because it's the developer who's setting up these uh, test configurations and scripts for the operator to run or for themselves to run. They can uh, let's not say that. I can run this myself. I can run the sequence or I can run individual tests as I need to. So that's the developer's view. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the last of the three, the programmer's view. And the programmer's view You'll notice right off the bat, uh, it looks very similar to the developer's view. In fact, it's exactly the same. The only difference is I now have permission to come in and edit the actual code in that test. This is the MTF code. I have full access to it. It's C sharp. I can make changes to it. Well, I can't actually make changes to this piece, but what I can do is come in. As you see, this particular bit of code is marked as read only up here, but I can save it in a separate file. Let's call this MTF Allen. And now I will see that there is a new MTF Allen. And I can edit that. And I have full access to the code, so I can make changes to it um, and store this down and alter it as much as I'd like. So if you need to make spot changes, like for instance the data has been collected and I want to run a special filter because I know a second order filter needs to be run before my MTF, I can make that alteration. If I need to send a command to my unit under test, the device that I'm running because I want to change, for instance, the field of view, I can do that. I can add whatever I need to to this code and configure it for my specifications. Or if I want to write a whole new test from scratch, I have that option as well. And I can use these other tests as templates or forms or examples when I make those alterations. I do not want to save that. So that's the 
programmers view. So that's a very quick overview into the operation of IR Windows. We're going to spend more time in future videos looking at some of these options and details and what you can really do with IR Windows. But I want to thank you for uh, putting up with my choking through this test, <laughs> through this video and everything else. And uh, if you want more information, you can come to our website at sbir.com and look forward to uh, seeing you in future videos. Thank you.